Hello everyone, I'm Shuo Han from Johns Hopkins University. My topic is in homogeneity correction in magnetic resonance images using deep image priors. First, I'd like to introduce some background knowledge. In homogeneity is a common issue in MR images. To visualize what in homogeneity looks like, an example image is shown here on the bottom left. As we can see in this image, the same tissue, white matter for example, can have different intensities across different spatial locations. The homogeneity is often modeled as a slowly varying multiplicative field. As a pre-processing step for many other algorithms, we often want to decompose the observed image into a more uniform image, times the uh, homogeneity field. In this study, we use deep image prior to correct image in homogeneity. Deep image prior is an unsupervised learning method. It has been used in many applications such as denoising, imaging painting, and super resolution. As opposed to conventional methods where we use the observed image as input to the network and use the true image as target during the training, in deep image prior, we actually use a randomly initialized tensor as the input to the network, and we use the observed image as the target during the training. And we want to optimize the network parameters to output an estimation of the true image. The rationale behind this is that we, if we use the convolutions in a neural network, it can capture the patch recurrence in the image, and it essentially acts like a prior during the optimization. The first contribution of this work is that we explain deep image prior in a Bayesian framework. The second is that we apply double deep image priors to inhomogeneity correction in MR images. And we found that our proposed method can outperform a popular uh, inhomogeneity correction method where the noise or the inhomogeneity is high. First, I'd like to introduce our derivation of deep image priors in a Bayesian framework. Here, we model the observed image V equal to the underlying clean image U times the inhomogeneity field B plus an IID Gaussian noise N with its variance sigma square. Again, as in deep image priors, we use randomly initialized tensors Z sub U and Z sub B as inputs to the network. Here, we model the image as the output of a neural network F sub U with its parameters theta sub u, and we model the uh, inhomogeneity as the outputs of another network f sub b with its parameters theta sub b. And we want to optimize the parameters of these two networks to match the observed image at the target during the training. To study this problem in a Bayesian framework, we need to calculate the posterior of the image U and the hom inhomogeneity field B given the observed image V. According to our previous discussion, this posterior can actually be expressed using the network inputs Z sub U and Z sub B and the network parameters theta sub U and theta sub B. That is to say that we only need to study this new posterior using our parameterization in the following discussion. According to Bayes' rule, we know that the posterior is proportional to the likelihood times the priors. Here, we assume the priors are independent from each other. Let us first derive the formula of the likelihood. According to our model, and we know that the noise is Gaussian, the log likelihood can be expressed using, using this formula. And we have to make some assumptions to calculate the priors. Here, we assume the prior is also, also Gaussian distribution. And uh, according to this assumption, the priors can be easily expressed. Combine the likelihood and the priors, we can write down the optimization objective functions as shown in this formula. The first term is some form of MSE loss. The last four terms are all two weighted case. From this formula, we can see there are actually some differences from the original deep image prior. The first is that we optimize the network inputs as well. The second is that we use weight decays in the optimization. 
The third is that the weighting between the MSC loss and the weighted case actually depends on sigma square. So we have to estimate the noise level for each specific image. The fourth difference is that uh, instead of maximizing the probability of the posterior, we choose to maximize the expectation to get a better accuracy using uh, optimization, optimization algorithm called SGLD. This slide has some implementation details. First is that we only implemented this idea for 2D slices, and this could be extended to 3D images in the future. The second is that we used the two modified units for the image and the homogeneity respectively. The third is that the the output of the inhomogeneity network F sub B is one thirty second of the output of the image network F sub U, and uh, we use by cubic interpolation to upsample the output of F sub B to enforce the slow variance of the inhomogeneity field. Here we use the tool called BrainWeb to perform quantitatively comparison between our algorithms and the very popular conventional methods and for on the performance of the inhomogeneity correction. So for audience who are not familiar with this tool, it actually uh, can simulate the images, uh, brain images with different levels of noise and the severity of inhomogeneity. So we use a uh, pair wheel coxon test to, to compare our methods and the uh, method and the results of N4. And then we found that our methods can outperform N4 when the noise level is high or the inhumidity is severe, as shown in the last column. Here is an example, a visual example of the results of N4 and uh, our proposed method. The first image is the observed image from the simulation of BrainWeb and is uh, true inhomogeneity field. And in the middle is the results of the N4 correction. And uh, on the right is the results of a proposed method. And we can see that the N4 uh, results have some anatomical pattern in the estimated field. And it tends to produce brighter um, homogeneity when there are like white matter and darker when there are um, ventricles or gray matter. Um, compared with them for our proposed methods can actually produce the more similar um, homogeneity field compared with the true field. Uh, in the next, we use the OSS3 data to compare the performance on real scan. Uh, the first image is the original image from the OSS3 dataset, and we can see the image has like darker intensities in the surroundings, and the center is brighter. And uh, the subfigure B is the result of N4, and the subfigure C is the result of, of our algorithm. And I draw, draw a line here to show the intensity along this line uh, in the subfig D. So this part corresponds to this segment of gray matter, uh, sorry, white matter. And uh, actually, we can see that our proposed method, which is represented by the pinkish curve, is more flattened than the greenish curve in this range, which means that our algorithm produces more uniform white matter compared with M4. In summary, we derive the deep image prior optimization um, object functions in a Bayesian framework, and our proposed method can outperform M4 when noise is high or in homogeneity is severe. And uh, there are also some drawbacks. The first is that we only have 2D implementation the second is that because the network are updated online, the computation is real slow. Uh, this is all my presentation. Thank you for listening. I would like to thank my colleagues in my lab at Johns Hopkins. Thank you all.